Hello, do you have a Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer and you've been curious about putting it inside a safety enclosure? I've done it. I also have the AMS Lite and uh, I have that on top of the enclosure. I've done some clever modifications to make that setup work. But in this video, I wanna go through step-by-step -step all the things that I did. I did a lot of trial and error based on what I read from what other people had done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my setup and I'll start from the bottom, work my way up. And if this works for you, I'm gonna include all kinds of links down below to things that you can check out. If you wanna use those links to make purchases, they help the channel. So let's move on. First of all, the enclosure. Now there are a lot of enclosures out there that you can buy. And here's where I'm gonna get some hate in the comment section because some of these enclosures cost almost as much as the A1 3D printer did when it was on sale during Black Friday. So, <laughs> so there is that. The enclosure that I went with is one that I have a lot of experience with. I have the printed solid, it's called the Next Gen CR10 style enclosure. Uh, it's made of uh, aluminum composite material, which is ACM, and uh, they go together very easily and they have a lot of options available if you wanna uh, attach things to the back of them. They have little vent holes already there. And what I did with mine is uh, I've, I've got it set up in here and as you can see, the 3D printer is parked right smack in the middle and it fits fine. The reason I went with this particular enclosure is that as the A1 uh, gets taller, you definitely need a lot of vertical height. If you go with a smaller enclosure, uh, because you have that AMS uh, adapter on top and such, uh, there's a chance that you could bend that or collide with the top. So uh, be careful if you're checking out other enclosures because you just wanna make sure you do have that vertical clearance. Also, the enclosures, they have side openings, so if you wanna close those up, they include the panels to do that. And there are cutouts on the side, so what happens is this is a negative pressure setup. So what's going on is you have these air holes on the bottom and it's gonna be pulling air inside the enclosure. So that's, that's good because, you remember, I don't know if you saw my previous video, but the A1 3D printer does not have a cooling fan on the motherboard. It's only using a heat sink to an aluminum extrusion. If you check this other video uh, that I did previously, it shows you how you can very easily 3D print, use a five volt fan, get a USB adapter, and you can get some additional airflow inside the 3D printer. So one thing you notice when you got your Bamboo Lab A1 and you did the setup and the calibration is, boy, that thing does a lot of vibration <laughs> because it's a veg slinger as well too. So it's gonna uh, do all kinds of uh, vibrating and moving around. And if you have this on top of your desk or on top of a table, you're gonna notice very early on that holy cow, does this thing vibrate? So one of the things that I discovered through looking at all kinds of videos from other creators is that putting it on top of a cement block uh, nulls out a great majority of the vibrations. And what I used, and again, this is a simple solution I found at Lowe's, this is a 12 inch by 12 inch by one inch thick paver stone, <laughs> maybe three, four bucks, depending on when you go over there. And I've got the printer on top of that and it's knocked down, I'd say about 80% of the vibrations. Uh, I don't have the rattling, like it's trying to free itself from the top of the rack kind of thing anymore. So that's a nice solution there. Uh, also, you're gonna see off to the side there, I've got the, the poop collector, which kind of sits off to the side. That works out really well. Over on the right side, that's where I have my air filtration device. That's the bento box. Uh, I got this from Voxel and uh, Voxel offers these. Actually, I got a whole bunch of these guys sitting right here. Um, you can get them for between $35 and $40. Uh, if you go with the more powerful fans, uh, they're 40, 40 bucks. Uh, they come in this great kit and everything is there set to go. Uh, it's very easy to put together. Again, I have a video uh, explaining how to put those together and they're very effective at getting the VOCs and doing a good job getting the nasties out so you don't have to inhale them. Okay, on top of the enclosure, there's two things, or let me be clear, on the ceiling of the enclosure, there are two things. Um, I have a fire safety device and I have the LED lamp. The LED light is just a simple $24, simpleton little um, under cabinet, um, AC power plugged uh, LED lamp. You can get those again, Home Depot, Lowe's, box store of your choice. Uh, so I found that worked really well. In the past, I've used LED strip lights, but um, I just didn't like them. Um, over time, uh, the, the glue would fail, it would start to fold up. So the lamp has worked way better. Up top, 
I'm a big thing about safety. I'm a, like I said, I, 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 I want to print safe. And if anything bad happens inside that little box, I want to do everything I can to mitigate the disaster. So I have, uh, I use two different uh, fire safety devices. Uh, I use the Wham Bam Sentry. And basically that is Velcro to the very top. And what that does is it has a, a fire suppressant with a small um, uh, charge inside of it so that uh, if there is a fire inside the enclosure and the fire touches this, it's going to discharge and put all that uh, fire suppressant powder uh, on top of the fire. So there's that. The other thing I have in some of my enclosures is a tube called Blaze Cut. So what that is, is it's more expensive, but it's a pressurized tube full of suppressant. And what happens is if that tube is breached by the fire, then that suppressant is released at about 400 PSI and puts out the fire. So again, these aren't super expensive things. Again, you know, the, the Wham Bam solution is under $50. And of course the Blaze Cut one is more expensive. They both do the same thing. But again, for me, uh, in my print cave, you know, I just want to have as much safety as possible if anything bad happens. Okay, now the fun part, the AMS light. This gave me a lot of headaches early on. So here's what I did the first time around. I tried having the AMS beside the enclosure and due to the short tubing that is included with the A1 and AMS light, um, I wound up having to get longer tubes. Now there are two ways you can do this. On the Bamboo Lab webpage, you can buy a long length of um, their tubing or I decided to give Capricorn tubes because the Capricorn tubing is the same quality and it has the same inner diameter that uh, Bamboo Labs is specifying uh, that they recommend for the Bowden tubing. So the issue that I had is that, as you probably already know if you have an A1 and an AMS light, is the printer is very fussy about how that tubing is oriented into the hot end. If there's any kind of friction, is there any kind of resistance, it's going to have difficulty moving the filament uh, into the extruder or getting it out to do its uh, material changes. So. I found that having it beside uh, and going in through a hole in the side of the enclosure and kind of tubing up and around, uh, kind of like an S, sometimes it would work, but a great majority of the time I was getting a lot of false alerts. The Bamboo Lab would report that it was having difficulty feeding, I would go down, I would reset it and have it try again, and then it would work. So uh, that system was not working for me. So my idea of having it right beside the enclosure uh, didn't work for me at least in the, in the incarnation that I created. Now, the method that I have now that does work very well for me is I have the AMS unit up on top, which of course does make it a little bit more challenging to load and unload filaments because now I'm climbing on top of a step stool. And because I did this filament enclosure thing around the AMS, it, it gets even more fun. We'll get to that later. But what I did find is that if I wanted to use the AMS on top of the enclosure, well, now the power cord that goes from the A1 to the AMS light was way too short. So again, some research. I happen to find a reseller on Etsy that sold longer cables that will work. And there were a lot of reviews that indicated that people were very happy with the product. So, and surprisingly, I, I, I bought uh, two of them. They showed up very quickly. And that allowed me to route the power cable from inside the enclosure, out the side, into the back of the unit. So now, that worked fine. Now, as far as the Bowden tubing, I was a little concerned about that. But what I discovered is that if I took the print head and brought it to the... Basically, I moved everything as far away as possible. So I moved the print head all the way down. I, I moved the, you know, the print head and everything as far, far to the front as I could, because that's as, the furthest it's going to be. Uh, from that AMS unit. And what I did is I did one of two things. I had bought the, the large quantity of the Bamboo Lab tubing. So what I did is I just basically plugged it into the hot end and I just slowly unraveled it and I went all the way to the AMS. And uh, as soon as I had a, you know, a little bit of excess material, uh, as far as the tubing went, I, I cut it. I used a very specific you know, uh, cutter so I wasn't pinching. And, and then routed that up through there. And I did that with all four. I found that if you only buy the Bamboo Lab tubing, you run a little short. And because I'd already purchased some of the Capricorn tubing, I was able to, to dip into my stash of Capricorn tubing to finish the job. 
So we fall within the specs. Now, the one thing with this setup is I did the enclosure uh, around the filament. Uh, it's a popular uh, mod that you can print out and, and add to the uh, AMS light. I think if I had it over again, I would probably pull it off of there <laughs> because the environment down here does stay pretty dry and I do dry my material before use. Uh, what this done is it's made it harder to, uh, when you're climbing on top, uh, feeding material in there uh, to access everything quick and easily. So it was well-intentioned, it looked great. Um, certainly, uh, I try to make sure that anytime I'm done printing, I unload everything. If you're in a human environment and you wanna keep stuff loaded in there, I can see where this has some very good potential. But uh, yeah, this is not one of those uh, upgrades that I would say you absolutely have to do. I, I've, I found more cons and pros with it. So that's my setup. I'm not saying it's the perfect setup. I'm just saying that this has worked very well for me for several months now. Uh, again, you know, the printed solid enclosure, you know, it's over $200. There may be some other enclosures out there that are roughly this size that could probably work as well too. But again, um, I've just found that this one is great. Uh, definitely, uh, I can't emphasize enough that the fire safety is a really good thing to consider. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that there's a definite temperature operating range that the A1 uh, specifically says it needs to operate at. And I have that uh, information right here. I also, as I mentioned earlier, I mentioned it in the uh, linked video for the uh, cooling system. But uh, yeah, so depending on what your environment is, where your print room is, uh, that would be something you definitely want to take into consideration. Down here in my space, it stays between 60 and 69 degrees because I live up here in the Arctic of Maine. So uh, the basement tends to stay on the cool side. So uh, overheating the machine hasn't been an issue. So that's it for this time. Again, my big thing is printing safely. I hope this information is useful to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have a setup that works, tell me about it. If you have questions, again, check out the description. I'll have a lot of links for a lot of the uh, pieces of equipment that I use that I find that work very well. And if you wanna see what I'm working on, check out my social media on these links. That's it for this time. Thank you for watching. And remember, please print safe.